Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I'm going to be showing you another Vegas Pro 17 tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to get the best 4K render settings for Vegas Pro 17. So for those people who are impatient and don't want to learn exactly why, I'm actually just going to put all the settings on the screen right here for you to pause and copy down if that's what you wanted to do. We're going to go over three ways of doing this. And right before we get started, I do want to let you know that there are two different types of 4K if you didn't know. There's 4K UHD, Ultra HD, and then there's regular 4K. 4K UHD is the most commonly viewed one, and the resolution is 3840 by 2160. That's 4K UHD, and then there's True 4K, which is 4096 by 2160. Only high-end cameras usually take this quality of video, so for the most part, you're going to be working with 3840 by 2160. So this is the first one, Sony XAVC XAVCS. So here's the next one, if you go to Magic's AVC slash AAC MP4. And for the third wave, you go to Magic's Intermediate, and then go to Intermediate 422. Now again, those three settings we just saw were for people who don't want to learn why these are the best settings. So now for the people who want an explanation on why these are the best settings, here we go. We're going to start with Magix Intermediate since it's the one open right now. So Magix Intermediate is Magix's response to Apple's ProRes series. Apple created a ProRes very high quality .mov file type and rendering format and Magix also created their own. Now the difference between this one is this is an extremely high quality one. And the only thing you'd be changing depending on your setup is your profile. So where these numbers come into play, 422 and 444, these are referring to the chroma subsampling of your footage shot. So DSLR cameras that are about $1,000, $1,500 can shoot in this high of a quality chroma subsampling, which is 422 chroma subsampling. So if you don't have a camera that's over a grand or $1,500, then this option that we would be choosing right here is already more quality than your camera has even produced. So for most people on this planet, they're probably going to be using intermediate 422 proxy. Make sure you do not have allow source to adjust frame size on, because if you have certain footage in there that's not 4K, it could change the resolution of your entire output video, and you definitely don't want that. Frame rate, choose whatever you want. Most people who shoot in 4K are probably shooting at 23.9, and if you have a higher end camera, then you'll be shooting in most likely 60 frames a second. Everything else, you can keep the same. If you have this box unchecked, then your computer is going to be using your graphics card to help you render faster. If you check this box, you're going to be using just your processor and it's going to render slower. So choose whatever you want there. Audio, make sure include audio is checked. And your sample rate, you can't even change it. Keep it at 48. It's going to sound great. Go to Project tab. Under Video Rendering Quality, I like to click this and then hit Best. And then once you're done with that, go ahead and save this template. Name it whatever you want up there and then hit the floppy disk. And then hit OK. And then you have saved your move template, your best.mov settings. So let's go up to the Magic's AVCAAC section and choose the best 4K MP4 settings. So we'll see Internet 4K and then we'll see a lot of options here. You'll see a blank one with nothing beside it. And then if you have a graphics card that's compatible, like a GTX or an AMD graphics card, you'll see an option below it with either NVIDIA, NVENC, or an AMD encoding option. This means it's going to use your graphics card to encode and render faster. So let's just choose this top one right here, 4K, 60 frames a second, hit Customize Template. Now there's not too many options you need to change here. Keep the two upper ones checked. Frame size, make sure it's 4K. Make sure this checkbox is unchecked. Profile, high main or baseline. This won't make any visual difference to you at all, but by default it's on high and that's the one I like. Frame rate, go ahead and choose whatever frame rate you want your project to be in. Most likely it's gonna be in 23.97, so you can choose that one or whatever your project is. Make sure allow source to adjust frame rate is unchecked. Field order, you can't change that. Pixel aspect ratio, keep that one. Reference frames and de-blocking filter, leave those default. Unless there's some sort of proprietary options you are needing those to be different, keep those the same. Constant bitrate or variable bitrate, 
This will make no visual difference for your video. The only difference it'll be is in the metadata. It'll either say it's constant bitrate or variable bitrate. But the most average used one is variable bitrate and that's the one we're gonna choose. So for your maximum bits per second, this varies depending on what you were shooting. So if you were shooting 4K at 23 frames per second, then you can keep your maximum at 110 million. Your average, you wanna keep that at 100 million. That is the best bit rate for 4K 24 frames a second. Now if you're shooting 4K 60 frames a second, then you're gonna to wanna to bump this number up. You're gonna to wanna to change the maximum bit rate to 240 million and your average bit rate also 240 million because most of the time when you're shooting 4k 60 frames a second your bit rate's going to fluctuate between 200 to 400 megabits a second so you want to keep that as high as possible it's going to make a really big file size but it's going to keep your quality number of slices keep this one at four unless you're doing something proprietary you could just leave that there now in code mode this is where it's going to either choose your main concept ABC, which is going to be your processor to encode and render, or you can tell it to use your graphics card to encode and render. Now, if you choose your graphics card, you, these options down here are going to light up and allow you to change them. If you have your processor, these are going to be grayed out. So for sure, from my experience, using my graphics card to encode and help render makes it go two to three times faster. So I always recommend using your graphics card to do this because it's a tremendous help and a speed boost in rendering. So let's just go ahead and choose NV encoder. Now, if you have an AMD graphics card, that'll probably say AMD encoder or something along those lines, but these settings should be the same. So let's select that. Preset, this is basically a scale going from low-end graphics card all the way down to high-end graphics card. So if you have like a GTX 1060 like I have, I'm gonna consider that a low to medium-end card and I'm gonna choose high quality. If you have like a 2070 or a 2080 RTX, then you could choose low latency high quality. Those are probably gonna be your two best options, depending on your card. So I'm gonna choose high quality. RC mode. This is basically how it's going to encode your bitrate. It's not going to make any visual difference for you at all. So this one doesn't necessarily matter. But again, you can look at it as a scale perspective. The upper options are going to be lower in graphics cards. The bottom options are going to be higher in graphics cards. So I'm just going to stick with VBR. You can choose VBR high quality or low delay CBR high quality. Again, you're, you're most likely not going to see any difference at all. So I'm just going to choose VBR. Now, once you're done here, go to audio. Make sure that one's checked. Leave the sample rate at 48, because if you change that, then it could make your audio sound a little bit different, because mostly everything's recorded at 44.1 or 48 hertz. Bit rate, you, this is not gonna make any difference in sound quality. If you keep it at 192, you can increase it higher if you wanted, but you're not gonna hear the difference, and it's only gonna increase your file size. So I like to keep that at default 192. Go to system, leave everything here default, unless you're doing something proprietary with the color space, Leave this all alone. Project at the very top, video rendering quality. I like to click that and choose best. Once you've done that, you can rename it best 4K and then hit that little floppy disk to save it. Hit OK. And that puts it down here in your favorites and you can select it and it lights up the star and now you can easily find it. Now, last but not least is the older version of all of this and it's Sony XAVC XAVCS. Now, as you know, Sony has nothing to do with this product anymore. It is owned by Magix. So they just left the encoder in here because when Magix bought it from them, they bought the rights to that encoder as well. So we choose Sony XAVCS. Any options you choose up here at the top are gonna be .mxf files and you don't want that. So you have to scroll all the way to the bottom to where you see XAVCS long. And once you've chosen that, that's gonna give you an MP4 file, as you see at the bottom. Choose whichever quality you want, which we're just gonna do 4K, and then hit Customize Template. And actually, you don't have to change anything in here, except the frame rate, whatever you want the frame rate to be. So that's the only thing you have to change. Once you're done with there, if you go to Audio, you can't change anything in there. And then Project, use Video Rendering Quality, Best. That's the easiest one to do. Now, when you render in this version, it actually changes your color just a hair. I think it darkens it up just a slight bit and maybe adds a little bit of saturation. So you will notice that if you render with the Sony XABCS, it's gonna look a little bit different than what your product has been looking like as you're working on it. So use that at your own caution if you want. 
it's going to provide a really nice high quality video file as well. So just check it out and see if you like it. And those right there, my friends, are the best 4K settings you can choose in Vegas Pro 17. You got two .mp4 files and then one .mov file options you can choose depending on what you want. That's going to provide you the highest quality and maybe I hope you learned something if you were listening to this whole explanation and didn't know what an option was. So do me a favor and like this video, maybe even subscribe. I got a lot more Vegas 17 videos coming out, so go ahead and check out my channel. I'm trying to hit a billion subscribers by the end of the year, so I think I could do it with your help if you hit that subscribe button. So again, that's going to wrap it up and I will see you guys in the next video.